Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 16 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, today is the 16th lecture and the beginning of the second part of this course. As I mentioned in the very first lecture, the first 15 or so lectures were concerned with descriptive statistics. The next 15 are going to be concerned with probability theory and the last 15 will pertain to inferential statistics. So, pehle pandra lecturon ke dauran aapne mukhtalif techniques seekhi of summarizing and describing data. Data that you collect on sample basis. Hamari uh, zyada tar discussion um, univariate situation ke hawale se thi jis mein hum ek hi single variable ke ko describe kar rahe the in different ways and in case of a quantitative variable we discussed at length the frequency distribution of the variable and its uh, shape its spread and its measure of central tendency also in the last lecture I discussed with you a very important concept and that was regression and correlation when we try to relate two variables with each other. I hope that you enjoyed learning the various concepts that were discussed in the first part of the course and I hope that you will enjoy probability theory as much if not more. Aap kahenge ke ये क्या ये मुमकिन है कि probability जैसे मुश्किल concept को हम enjoy कर सके उससे ज़्यादा तो मुश्किल कोई concept ही नहीं है actually students this is not the case uh, this is uh, an impression that is all around that it is supposed to be the most difficult topic the only thing is that you need to have a methodological approach अगर आप उसको एक systematic तरीके से approach करेंगे तो आप देखेंगे कि it is not really that difficult and in fact it is quite enjoyable. In this part of the course we will begin with the basic concepts of probability and we will go on to discuss discrete and continuous probability distributions. In particular we will be discussing the binomial distribution the hypergeometric and the Poisson distributions and also the most important distribution in statistical theory the normal distribution. So let us begin with the very basics. Sabse pehle probability ki definition thodi si discuss kar lete hai. Um, what do you understand by the word probability? I am sure that you will reply that when we are talking about chance that's what we mean by probability. Ke hum kisi cheez ka kitna chance hai, kisi cheez ka kitna imkaan hai, iski baat kar rahe hai. Ji, bilkul aisa hi hai. Uh, lekin uh, in the next few lectures you will see that there are various ways in which you can define probability. We have the classical definition we have the relative frequency definition and then we also have the subjective or the personalistic definition of probability. These sub definitions hum ek ke baad ek discuss karenge um, and you will realize that the most important one from the statistical point of view is not the subjective, not the even the classical but the relative frequency definition of probability because this is the definition that pertains to real life phenomena and also a definition which enables you to quantify probability yani aap uh, number form mein express kar sakte hain ke for example partic ek particular event ki probability 75% hai ek aur event ki probability 55% hai um, in cheezon ko hum in detail in pandra lecturon ke dauran discuss karenge but today we have to start from the 
very basics. And students, the first thing that we will discuss in this regard is set theory. Uh, it will simply be a review of what you have already studied and the reason why we are going to discuss it is that as you will see later there are a number of concepts of probability theory which are facilitated by the use of set theory. Yani set theory ke zariye hum kai concepts ko badi asani ke saath explain kar sakte hain. Let us start from the definition of a set. As you all know a set is a well defined collection or list of distinct objects for example a group of students the books in a library the integers between 1 and 100 all human beings on earth etc etc its definition may I use two words well defined collection of objects and distinct objects in dono se kya murad hai? Well defined se matlab hai that I should be absolutely clear as to whether a particular object belongs to or not belongs to a particular set. Or distinct se yehi murad hai ke any particular element or object should appear in that set once and only once. Students, uh, the set itself is denoted by a capital letter usually such as capital A, capital B, capital C and the elements in the set are denoted by small letters. As you see in the examples on the screen, the set A could be consisting of small a, small b, small c and small d and the set capital B may consist of the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 7. The number of elements in a set A, this is denoted by NA and it is called the number of the set A. As you see on the screen, if a set consists of four elements, then we will say that the number of this set is four and we will write NA is equal to four. If X is an element of a set A, we write x belongs to A and if x does not belong to A then we write it with the same notation but crossing on the notation to denote that x does not belong to A. As you can appreciate a set can have um, any number of elements and if a set does not have even a s one single element it is called an empty set or a null set and it is denoted by the Greek letter phi. But students please note that the set consisting of the element 0 is not a null set because it contains one element and that is 0. In fact if a set contains only one element we say that it is a unit set or a singleton set. But students yahan ye bhi note kare ke agar ek element x ki baat kar rahe hain to uske gird hum parenthesis ya bracket nahi dalenge but if we are talking about a set containing one element x then we will be putting the parenthesis around the letter x as you now see on the screen. A set may be specified in two ways the first is called the roster method and in this method we give a list of all the elements of a set. For example, if we throw a die, our set of all possible outcomes consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And if we toss a coin, our set consists of head and tail. The other method is called the set builder method or the rule method and in this method we state a rule that enables us to determine whether or not a given object is a member of our set. For example, if we write that A is the set of all 
x values such that x is an odd number and x is less than 12. This means that we are talking about the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11. Speaking of sets, it should be kept in mind that the repetition of an element or the change of order of the elements in a set does not alter the set. Meaning that if I write 1, 3, 5, that is the same set as 5, 3, 1 or 5, 1, 3. The size of a set is given by the number of elements present in it. The number Na, in other words, denotes the size of a set. This number may be finite or infinite. A set is finite when it contains a finite number of elements. Otherwise, it is called an infinite set. The empty set is regarded as a finite set. Examples of finite sets would be the set A of uh, consisting of all the positive integers from 1 to 100, the set B consisting of X values where X represents a month of the year, C representing those X values which represent um, printing mistakes in a book and D representing those X values which represent living citizens of Pakistan. In tamam examples me aap uh, agree karenge ke we are talking about finite sets because number of living citizens of Pakistan is not an infinite number. Number of uh, mistakes in a book cannot be an infinite number and so on. On the other hand, examples of infinite sets are the set of even integers or the set of all real numbers between 0 and 1 including 0 and 1 or the set of points on a line or the set of the sentences in the English language. Of course it can be argued that the number of sentences in the English language is not an infinite number but the point to understand is that sometimes if the set or if a population is very very large so large that for practical purposes we can regard it as infinite then we do adopt this strategy. On the other hand in the first three examples it is obvious that they are really infinite sets because the total number of even integers or the number of real numbers, all the real numbers between 0 and 1 or the number of points on a line, they cannot be regarded as finite entities. These four examples that I have given you now, you will note that the first three examples the set of uh, all points on a line or the set of even integers or the set of all numbers between 0 and 1 inclusive ye to waqai infinite hain because they you can simply not uh, count them as finite uh, uh, entities lekin jo last example tha the set of all uh, sentences of the english language usme to argue kiya ja sakta hai ke it cannot be an inf infinite number truly speaking. So, in this case, I would like to say that sometimes when uh, the, uh, sets or samples or populations, if they are, they are so large that for all practical purposes they can be regarded as infinite, then we do adopt this uh, concept. A set that consists of some elements of another set is called a subset of that set. If B is a subset of A, then every member of set B is also a member of set A. 
For example, if set A consists of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 10 and B consists of 1, 3 and 5, then B is a subset of A. In other words, B is contained in A. Speaking of subsets, it should be noted that every set is regarded as a subset of itself and the null set phi is regarded as a subset of every set. Two sets A and B are equal or identical if and only if they contain exactly the same elements. In other words, set A is equal to set B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Speaking of subsets, we also need to differentiate between the proper subset and the improper subset. As you see on the screen, if a set B contains some but not all of the elements of another set A, while A contains each element of B, in other words, if B is contained in A and B is unequal to A, then the set B is defined to be a proper subset of A. A very important concept is that of the universal set. That set of which all other sets are subsets is called the universal set. As you now see on the screen, it is the set which contains all possible elements under consideration. It is also called the space and it is denoted by either by capital S or by capital Omega. An interesting question is how many subsets can a set have? As you see on the screen, a set S containing n elements will produce a totality of 2 raised to n subsets including the set S and the null set phi. For example, if we consider the set A consisting of the numbers 1, 2 and 3, this set will contain, uh, it will generate 2 raised to 3, that is 8 subsets and these subsets are phi, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. In the context of set theory, a very important and useful concept is that of the Venn diagram. A diagram that represents sets by circular regions, parts of circular regions or their complements with respect to a rectangle representing the space S is called a Venn diagram. The Venn diagrams are used to represent sets and subsets in a pictorial way and to verify the relationship among the sets and the subsets. A simple Venn diagram is of the form that you now see on the screen and the one that you see at this time pertains to disjoint sets, those two which do not have any element in common. On the contrary, if there are two sets A and B such that they have a few elements in common, then the Venn diagram is of the form that you now see on the screen. The next concept that we must concentrate on is the concept of operations that can be performed on sets. Sets can be combined in order to form new sets and the four main operations that we should consider are union, intersection, complementation and set difference. The union or sum of two sets A and B means the set of all elements that belong to at least one of the sets A and B. That is, A union B 
is the set of all those x values which belong either to A or to B. For example, if set A consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, while set B consists of 3, 4, 5, 6, then A union B consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Or ye jo nea set bana 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, students, aap note karenge ke it is fulfilling the basic property that I just mentioned in terms of union. Kyunke agar aap is set ke elements ko dekhe, to some of them belong to A but not to B, some of them belong to B but not to A and two of them belong to both A and B. So we can say that the elements of, these, uh, of this set belong to at least one of the two basic sets A and B. The intersection of two sets A and B means that set in which the elements belong to both A and B. For example, if set A consists of 1, 2, 3, 4 and set B consists of 3, 4, 5 and 6, then A intersection B is the set of the elements 3 and 4, as these are the two elements which belong to both A and B. Two sets A and B are defined to be disjoint or mutually exclusive or non-overlapping when they have no elements in common. That is, the intersection of the two sets is the null set phi. For example, if set A consists of all possible outcomes of a die, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, and set B consists of all possible outcomes when we throw a coin, that is head and tail, then students, it is obvious that these are disjoint sets in the sense that they have no element in common. The difference of two sets A and B denoted by A minus B is the set of all elements of A which do not belong to B. Representing this point by the Venn diagram that you now see on the screen, the shaded area of the set A represents the set A minus B because it is all those elements of A which do not belong to B. And the last concept in this regard is that of complementation. The particular difference S minus A, that is, the set of all those elements of S which do not belong to A is called the complement of A and it is denoted either by A bar or by A C. Symbolically, A bar is the set of all those X values which belong to S but which do not belong to A. In the Venn diagram that you now see, the shaded portion of the universal set S represents the complement of A because it contains all those elements which are not contained in A. The next important point to be considered is the algebra of sets and this is that part of set theory which provides us with a number of laws that enable us to solve a number of problems. The first law is the commutative law and as you now see on the screen it is given by A union B is equal to B union A and A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. I think that you will agree that uh, this law is quite self-evident. Zahir hai ke aapne A aur B ka agar union lena hai, to aapne unko ikatha karna hai. To agar aap A union B 
کہیں یا بی یونین اے کہیں it is one and the same thing and the same holds for intersection the next law is the associative law and it states that A union B union C is the same thing as A union B union C and similarly for intersection the distributive law is given by A intersection B union C is equal to A intersection B union A intersection C also A union B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection A union C students اس law کو یاد رکھنے کا آسان طریقہ یہ ہے کہ آپ ordinary multiplication اور addition کا example اپنے ذہن میں رکھیں when we write A into B plus C we know that it is equal to A into B plus A into C اسی طرح سے اگر آپ اس کو دیکھیں گے تو you will see that it is exactly the same pattern the item potent law is extremely obvious A union A is equal to A and A intersection A is also equal to A the identity laws are A union S is equal to S A intersection S is equal to A A union phi is A and A intersection phi is equal to phi یہ جو identity laws میں نے ابھی آپ کے سامنے رکھی اگر آپ کو اس میں کسی قسم کا بھی doubt ہو تو I would like to encourage you to draw the Venn diagram and to work with it yourself and to decide for yourself whether or not these are correct similarly we have some other laws as you now see on the screen the complementation laws are given by A union A bar is equal to S A intersection A bar is equal to phi A double bar is equal to A S bar is equal to phi and phi bar is equal to S also we have the De Morgan's laws and these are given by A union B whole bar is equal to A bar intersection B bar and A intersection B whole bar is equal to A bar union B bar once again uh, it is very simple to verify all these laws aap kuch numerical examples le lije take examples of sets which contain various numbers and then verify each and every one of these laws the next concept is that of the partition of a set and as you now see on the screen a partition of a set S is a subdivision of the set into non-empty subsets that are disjoint and exhaustive that is their union is the set S itself this implies that AI intersection AJ is equal to phi where I is unequal to J and A1 union A2 union A3 so on up to AN is equal to S let me explain this to you with the help of an example consider the set of all possible outcomes when we throw a die and that is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now if I uh, partition this set into three parts in such a way that the first part consists of the elements 1 2 the second part consists of 3 4 and the last part consists of 5 6 students this is a partition of the set S into three parts and it fulfills the formal definition that I just presented to you the union of the three sets 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 is equal to the big set 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 
every one of these three sets is mutually exclusive. 1, 2 is different from 3, 4 and 3, 4 is different from 5, 6. And there is no part of any of these three sets which is overlapping with any other set. The next concept is that of the class of sets. By a class of sets, I mean a set of sets. For example, if you consider the set of lines, this is a class of sets because each line itself is a set of points. The class of all subsets of a set A is called the power set of A and it is denoted by P of A. For example, if A is the set head and tail, then the power set is given by the null set phi, the set H, the set T and the set HT. Aapko yaad hoga ke ab se kuch teet pehle meinne aap se kaha tha ke if a set consists of n elements then the total number of subsets that it can produce is 2 raised to n. Aur vahaan pe bhi humne ek example consider ki thi. To abhi jo definition di uske tehet us example mein jo set consider kiya tha of the 2 raised to n subsets of the set that set was also a power set. Another very important and interesting concept is that of the Cartesian product of sets. As you now see on the screen, the Cartesian product of sets A and B denoted by A cross B is a set that contains all ordered pairs X, Y where X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. For example, if the set A consists of H, T and the set B consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, then the Cartesian product A cross B is the set of the ordered pairs H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6. Is silsile mein important point ye hai ke in general A cross B is not the same thing as B cross A. Because if you consider the graph in which X is on the X axis and Y is on the Y axis, you will readily agree that 1 comma 2 is not the same point as 2 comma 1. Students, I have discussed with you the basic concepts of set theory which I am sure that many of you are already familiar with. But it is good to revise and to refresh them in your mind because as you will see in the forthcoming lectures, uh, this theory will be very very useful for us when we talk about probability and a number of probabilistic problems. Another important um, mathematical theory which we will be using in solving probabilistic problems is the theory of counting rules. There are three rules that enable us to solve a number of problems in a convenient manner and these are the rule of multiple multiplication, the rule of permutations and the rule of combinations and I will pick them up one by one. As you now see on the screen, the rule of multiplication is stated as follows. If a compound experiment consists of two experiments such that the first experiment has exactly m distinct outcomes and corresponding to each outcome of the first experiment there can be n distinct outcomes of the second one then the compound experiment has exactly mn outcomes. 
स्टूडेंट्स ये रूल इतना मुश्किल नहीं है जितना कि आपको महसूस हुआ इन फैक्ट इट इज एक्सट्रीमली सिंपल लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल लेट्स गो बैक टू एग्जैक्टली द सेम वन दैट वी डिस्कस्ड अ शॉर्ट वाइल अगो वन सेट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ एच टी एंड द अदर वन कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स आई एम श्योर कि आपने उस वक्त भी रियलाइज कर लिया होगा कि दिस इज द केस ऑफ टॉसिंग अ कॉइन एज वेल एज टॉसिंग अ डाई द कॉइन कैन रिजल्ट इन टू पॉसिबल आउटकम्स हेड एंड टेल एंड सो एम इज इक्वल टू टू एंड द डाई कैन रिजल्ट इन सिक्स पॉसिबल आउटकम्स एंड सो एन इज इक्वल टू सिक्स नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू द मल्टीप्लीकेशन रूल द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वेज इन विच दिस कंपाउंड एक्सपेरिमेंट कैन बी परफॉर्म्ड इज एम इंटू एन सो इन दिस केस इट इज टू इंटू सिक्स एंड दैट इज ट्वेल्व एंड स्टूडेंट्स एज यू विल रिमेंबर ट्वेल्व इज एग्जैक्टली द नंबर ऑफ ऑर्डर पेयर्स दैट वी हैड वेन वी कंसिडर्ड दिस एग्जाम्पल अर्लियर एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द ट्वेल्व ऑर्डर पेयर्स आर एच वन एच टू एच थ्री एच फोर एच फाइव एच सिक्स टी वन टी टू T3, T4, T5, and T6. ये जो एग्जाम्पल हमने अभी डिस्कस किया इसमें वी कंसिडर्ड टू सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स बींग परफॉर्म टूगेदर टू गिव अस द कंपाउंड एक्सपेरिमेंट बट स्टूडेंट्स दिस कैन बी एक्सटेंडेड टू एनी नंबर ऑफ सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स विच आर बींग कंडक्टेड टूगेदर टू गिव अस द कंपाउंड एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड द अदर पॉइंट इज that this rule of multiplication ya multiplication theorem ye jo hai this is also called the rule of multiple choice and the example that i will now uh, consider and discuss with you will portray this point clearly as you now see on the screen suppose that a restaurant offers three types of soups four types of sandwiches and two types of desserts then a customer can order any one out of 3 into 4 into 2 that is 24 different meals ye to bahut hi zyada delicious example tha aur meri tarah aapke muh mein bhi pani bhara aaya hoga lekin um, restaurant to hum baad mein jayenge Let us consider the points that I just conveyed to you. देखिए इसमें तीन सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट हैं द चूजिंग ऑफ वन सूप आउट ऑफ द थ्री पॉसिबल चॉइसिस द चूजिंग ऑफ वन सैंडविच आउट ऑफ द फोर पॉसिबल सैंडविचेस एंड द चूजिंग ऑफ वन डिजर्ट आउट ऑफ टू इससे आपको कन्वे हो गया होगा why this rule is also called the rule of multiple choice dusri baat ke jaisa maine kaha ki isme teen simple experiments hain uh, the choosing of the soup the choosing of the sandwich and the choosing of the dessert so we are extending the initial rule mn to the case of three experiments and we are now applying the rule m into n into p where m is the number of ways of choosing a soup n is the number of ways of choosing a sandwich and p is the number of ways of choosing a dessert let us consider another very interesting example suppose that we have a combination lock on which there are eight rings in how many ways can the lock be adjusted yani ek combination lock ki baat ho rahi hai jis tarah ke aajkal suitcases par bhi aksar hote hain and this lock has eight positions and we are trying to determine how many different ways in which we can adjust or set this lock in order to lock the suitcase ab students is problem ko hum kis tarah se approach karenge देखिए 
the logical way to go about it is to think of the eight positions and to realize that for any one of those eight positions it can be filled in ten different ways isliye ke there are ten digits from zero to nine aur jo pehli position hai us pe bhi zero to nine koi bhi digit hum rakh sakte hain same for the second position same for the third and same for the eighth so if we apply the rule of multiplication we find as you now see on the screen that the total number of ways of doing this is 10 into 10 into 10 and so on so that the answer is 100 million can you imagine 100 million ways of adjusting that lock on your suitcase 100 million yani 10 crore and the formula in this case when all eight positions have the same number of possible ways of being set the formula can be simply stated as 10 raised to 8 10 into 10 into 10 8 times lekin fundamentally it is the same rule that i have been discussing for the past few minutes the rule of multiplication students this brings us to the end of today's lecture and in the next lecture i will discuss with you the other two very important rules which enable us to solve a number of problems in probability theory the rule of permutation and the rule of combination after that we will proceed to the real thing itself and that is probability until next time my best wishes to you and allah hafiz